Hello and welcome. My name is Terry Levine, and we're contacting you from the Namibia Tourism Board's North American Public Relations Office. We're very, very excited to tell you that the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue uh, 2013 features some iconic shooting locations in Namibia. Um, and so to give you a little bit more background, um, on the North American Public Relations team, we have three team members, Carolee Barnes, Malcolm Griffiths, and myself, Terry Levine, and we're here to um, help you with any images, story angles, or anything um, you need as a travel journalist to learn more about Namibia. But back to the Sports Illustrated 2013 swimsuit issue, um, we have um, our featured speaker, Ginger Amoni, um, who is an author, a filmmaker, and a representative of the North American Destination Marketing Program for Namibia to tell us a little bit more about these iconic shooting locations in the magazine. Thanks, Terry, and thank you all for listening. I'm glad that you share part of my enthusiasm for Namibia, and hopefully at the end of this webinar you'll share all of it, because Namibia is the most fascinating country. I've been there 22 years, working with baboons and elephants and rhinos, filming with Bushmen and Himba people, and it just holds endless fascination. Namibia is located on the southwest coast of Africa. It borders South Africa to the south and Angola to the north. And it's a country that has extreme arid beauty. In fact, more than 80% of the country is arid to semi-arid. And it has some of the most spectacular landscapes. And because it is so arid, it's very lightly populated. There are only 2.2 million people in the entire country. So you find space, freedom, great stories, and great locations for photography. The locations that the Sports Illustrated, that the, pardon me, the locations that the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue in 2013 chose to use include Sausesley, Deadsley, Commonskop, and Swakopmund's coastal dunes. And I just want to go into a little bit more detail about each of these spectacular places. Sausesley is where you find the highest, reddest, most stunning sand dunes on earth. In fact, they're over 300 meters tall. And this is where most tourists in Namibia choose to go. They want to challenge themselves to climb the big daddy and then run or tumble down it. You can go there and look for little tiny beetles that have special adaptations to live on the slip faces of the dune. Or if you want to, you can take a, a balloon ride that soars over this massive desert. There are various aspects to Sotis play. In fact, play means pan in Afrikaans, one of the local languages. And occasionally, when we have really good rains inland, water does flow through the Sondap River and ends up in Sotis play. So sometimes you're exceptionally lucky, like in February or March, and you can get some light water in the play. But generally, you get striking colors, very um, lush backdrops of sand, and in cases where, where the dunes peak, you get this amazing crest that gives you shadows that fall in different ways depending upon the time of the day. And it's just a place that holds endless fascination. Dead Play is basically on the other side of Sotis Play. You, if you climb up Big Daddy, you can run down into Dead Play. And Dead Play hasn't seen water in a very, very, very long time, something like 900 years. And they had some um, camel thorn trees that grew there, but no longer do. But they've left these skeletons of black branches and trunks jutting out into the air. And they're just so spectacularly photogenic. In fact, Franz Lanting, one of National Geographic's premier photographers, captured an image there a few years ago called Ghost Trees. And this went on to like define dead play probably for eternity. It's just such a spectacular place. So when Sports Illustrated was looking for one of their locations, this was a natural pick. In fact, for every photographer that comes to Namibia, this is the place to be. Coleman's Cop is one of my personal favorites. It's an enchanting ghost town. 
Uh, the story behind Coleman's Cop is in the late 1800s, early 1900s, a laborer was working on a railway track there, and he found diamonds in the sand. And those diamonds led to the founding of an amazing diamond village, a miner's village. And it had the first x-ray machine in southern Africa, and the first bowling alley, and a very, very vibrant life there until all the diamonds were exhausted, the houses fell into ruin, and now what you see is Coleman's Cook. And it stands as a testimony to what was and the possibilities of the desert consuming what it is. But it's, again, it's a great backdrop for photography and a great place to let your imagination run wild. Swakopmund's coastal dunes offer a completely different opportunity for exploring the desert. Basically, Namibia has one of the oldest, driest deserts on Earth. And this Namib sand sea runs for hundreds of kilometers along the coast. And there the dunes fall straight down into the sea. So while but only the hardiest could ever trek very far inland. If you stay along the coast, you can do things like quad biking and sand skiing and sandboarding and just exploring on your own. You can do dune drives. There's several places where sea colonies breed, or seal colonies rather breed, and you have amazing seabirds. In fact, the Dumera tern, which is an endangered species, and um, flamingos even breed there. There used to be a, a freshwater estuary that the sea is kind of taking over. And inland, about 10 kilometers from the coastline, you actually find a shipwreck. So it just goes to show you how much the sand sea is consuming the desert there. But it's consuming it so spectacularly beautifully that it's stunning. And again, a place for anyone who visits Namibia to come and explore. Thanks so much, Ginger, for running us through those four different shooting locations. Um, and if you would like, um, speaking now to the travel journalist on the webinar, if you would like any further information on any of these locations or Namibia in general, please contact myself, Terry Levine, or my colleague Malcolm Griffiths at the emails or phone numbers um, right here on the screen, and we'll be happy to get you any information um, you need. Thanks so much, and look forward to being in touch regarding Namibia.